Hello there, and welcome back. Yeah. So, we've just bought four Eccles cakes, but actually they were in a wrapper that said mince pies. And it said festive underneath, so I'm going to try these now. That's definitely an Eccles cake. But they're being sold as mince pies. What do you think of that? Anyway, I want to talk about two things. One, the Rings of Power, season one, episode one. In fact, I'll talk about that first. And secondly, the recent Hell Tour Festival, 2024, nearly said 2014 then, at the Phoenix. So, yeah, The Rings of Power. So it's already two seasons in. I haven't watched any of it. I took out a free subscription with Amazon yesterday. And I've already watched the new Batman film, or the Batman film from two years ago, which was excellent. I really enjoyed that. And um, watched episode one of... The Rings of Power and was very impressed with it as a Tolkien fan. I liked the themes of Beren and Luthien, similar to Aragorn and um, Arwen, where one is an elf, the other is a human, and um, the elves have to move away, and the human is longing for the elf. And yeah, it keeps that wonderful story of Baron and Luthien going. I like the way there's an elven watchtower, which is similar to Amon Hen. No, not Amon Hen. What do I mean? Weathertop. The ancient watchtower of Amon Sun. Very similar to that, although it's not that particular one. I like the way the Rings of Power is taking stuff from the Tolkien mythology and creating new stories. And that is why I believe J.R.R. Tolkien would have loved The Rings of Power. It's not true to the appendices in the book, 100%, as far as I can gather. And he would have liked that, because the whole point of Tolkien's world was that he created a mythology for the English to enjoy, because they didn't have one. You know, the Celts had one. And different parts of Europe had one, Vikings had one, but England didn't have one. So he wrote The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Silmarillion, in the hope that we could have a mythology to enjoy. And that's exactly what the Rings of Power series is doing. It's taking all those elements and creating a brand new story. So as a fan of the books and the mythology, so far, episode one has been very good, and I'm going to watch episode two tonight and then tell you what I think. I'm going to do it episode by episode. Feel free to leave your comments about what you think of the Rings of Power down below. And the other review I'm going to give today is of the Hell Tour Festival 2024, which is a film festival of horror. And this year, the theme was vampires. It was held at the Exeter Phoenix. I was lucky attend to attend the Sunday, but it actually ran from Friday afternoon right the way through to the end of Sunday. And I was fortunate enough to see a talk by Mark Norman, who's actually an old school librarian of mine. Um, so that was great to see him, him again. He gave a talk on Sabine Baring Gould and whether the influence of Sabine Baring Gould had some way influenced Bram Stoker in the writing of Dracula. The result was no, it hadn't really. However, Sabine Baring Gould's Book of Werewolves may well have inspired the writing of Dracula. Um, that was an hour's talk. That was very interesting. Mark was also there promoting his podcast, the Folklore Podcast. Check it out if you have time. There's loads on there. And also his latest books um, about 
um, folklore in Devon as well as um, folklore within Scooby-Doo. I think the latest book's called Zoinks or Zoics. So there was that. And then we had some actors. We had Reese Shearsmith from The League of Gentlemen um, talking about his favourite vampire films, as well as um, John Jonathan Rigby and another chap whose name escapes me. But the three actors, he looked a lot like H.P. Lovecraft. And I actually said to him, did you play H.P. Lovecraft? And he said no, and, and Reese Shearsmith said no, but he should. He should play Lovecraft. Um, I will try to get his name and put it in the comments. But anyway, those three talked about vampire films. We had a brilliant um, talk where we watched all the entrances of Dracula over a hundred years, starting with Nosferatu. Uh, going through the Christopher Lee Hammer stuff and going all the way up to um, Gary Oldman in the 90s adaption. And we watched the little segment where Dracula invites you to his house. And after each clip, everyone gave a round of applause. And then the actors spoke about why they liked that scene, why those scenes worked for them, why they didn't. So that was fantastic. I took a little break. I couldn't attend all the talks, so I went out for lunch and attended a gothic marketplace event happening in the Corn Exchange where they had lots of fashion and accessories. Alternative market it was, that was very interesting. And then I popped back after lunch to see one of my favourite writers, Kim Newman, aka Jack Yeovil. You may know him from writing, uh, reviewing stuff in, in Empire magazine for years. He's a film critic or film reviewer, but you may know him from the Anno Dracula series, or more importantly, as Jack Yeovil writing the early horror Warhammer novels, which were also about vampires, Drakenfels, Genevieve Undead, and Beasts in Velvet. So he signed all three of these for me. He actually hails from Somerset and said he he was thinking that he might be one of the first goths from the West Country back in the 70s before goth was even a concept or a niche. He was a goth. Um, he set himself the task of watching all the horror films that had been made, which apparently was possible back in the 70s. It wouldn't be now. He spoke for about an hour at length about his passion for cinema and the vampire film and his history of being a writer and a critic. And it was so interesting that that whole hour felt like five minutes. He was talking about he was the first person to review The Evil Dead in the UK because Stephen King had reviewed it. And he was saying how in those days everything you picked up every novel every film had a line from Stephen King on it saying how scared he was after reading or watching it so actually Stephen King was the most terrified man in the universe at the time because everything you picked up would say something like my hair turned white overnight after reading Stephen King but he was saying the importance of reviewing things reviewing the right thing at that time was important to making your name as a critic so he he felt that reviewing the film The Evil Dead when it came to the UK was a huge um, boost to his career. Unlike nowadays where everyone's a critic, where anyone can review anything. And he was saying about how he's, you know, he's opposed to the star rating system. He finds that's not a good way to, to review a film. He'd much rather read what someone thought about it. Um, and he talked, yeah, he spoke to me directly about his early days at game writing for Games Workshop. So he wrote for a friend who then later left the company. And actually, I think he might have even dedicated the first one, the third one, Beasts in Velvet, to her. And really, that's a lot of people's early introduction into the Warhammer world. This and the Conrad novels, um, which has kind of been buried in the mists of time, but... It was at a time when people used to write fiction for White Dwarf and 
um, there was a lot more creative expression in, in that magazine then. It wasn't just a catalogue for, for the miniatures. Um, what else? Oh, got a selfie with a um, couple of the actors and talked to um, Reese Shearsmith about his role in space as Mike and Tim's nemesis um, in Robot Club. So that, that was quite good fun. And Kim Newman was a great guy. He took time after the talk to sign people's books and hang out at the bar before he had to dash off and get his train. And they screened um, Dracula AD 1972, is it? Or 1974? Mm -hmm. But I, I couldn't stick around for that. I had to get back. Um, but all in all, it was a really good weekend. And I'm definitely going to go next year, whatever the theme may be. So Hell Tour... Um, 2025 and it's spelt tour as in you know a tour that you'd find in um, in a Dartmoor you know like a that kind of thing um, yeah so that's about it Rings of Power and Hell Tour 2024 both great experiences and thanks for watching that's all you know now the cringe mode